Hi, this is Dr. Stephen Jones, and I'm going to talk for just a few minutes on some things that you need to do to set up a quality paper. Doing these things won't guarantee a quality paper, but I promise you this, that if you don't follow these steps, it's much more difficult for you to set up a quality paper. And I promise it's because I'm going to show you things that I grade upon. So if you want to do a good paper for me and for most of your other faculty members, I promise you, uh, this is one way that you're going to be able to do that. So let's start off with avoiding unpleasantness. And we're going to start that by <clears throat> not getting into academic dishonesty. And that's the first um, groundbreaking thing for you to understand is academic dishonesty is something that we all look um, at with uh, distaste. We don't want to have to call you out on it and we don't want you to put us in that situation. So if it's not your material, if it is not your work, either don't use it or cite it. And even if it is cited, don't misuse that material. So Specifically, the policy at Emporia State is academic dishonesty is a basis for disciplinary action. It includes but is not limited to activities such as cheating and plagiarizing. And that is presenting as your own work, the intellectual or creative work of somebody else. And without giving them credit <clears throat> to that person or the sources. Let me just say this that if you do give somebody credit but not for the right stuff or if you give them credit for a quote when it's not or not when it is those are also academically dishonest they may not be as bad quote unquote as if you you know as cheating is or lying is but it is still incorrect and you can lose points. In fact, the policy is that if we catch you being academically dishonest, we have the option of failing the student for the academic hours in question, quote, and may refer the case to other academic personnel for further action, quote, Emporia State University may impose penalties for academic dishonesty up to and including expulsion from the university. It is probably not likely that you will get expelled from the university because you did not cite your sources in a paper. But I promise you this, I will at least fail the paper and I may go as far as failing you for the course for academic dishonesty. Now, if you don't cite a source properly, or if you don't cite a complete source, you're going to lose points. But that's not necessarily academic dishonesty. What we're saying is, if you use somebody else's words, or pictures, or thoughts, or anything else, something that you got from somebody else somewhere else give them credit for it then you're not plagiarizing or cheating or stealing you may not do a good job of writing but at least you're not being dishonest about the whole thing and that's all I'm going to say about this because I don't want to go any farther other than don't do it just don't do it now, what should you do? Well, you should find good information out there. But not every source of information is a good source of information. How do I know that? Well, there are a lot of places that you can go for information on the Internet that just aren't any good. Now, I'm not saying that all Internet sites are bad because it's not true. In fact, we're going to take you through how to use the library's internet website to find good information. It's not the only place to find good information, but it's a place to find good information. 
and it happens to be something that's free for you to use online through the library's website. But there are countless other sites out there that you might go to. You might Google it out there or whatever other search engine that you prefer to use. And you use that and you say, let me come up with information. I'll just throw a search out there and it'll find me something. Well, it may find you something. But here are some places not to go. One, blogs. It's not because blog's a, f a funny word, or even a vlog is a funny word. It's not that. I like to read blogs and vlogs, watch vlogs, but that's not a credible source of information. Now you may go, Dr. Jones, you don't have to tell me that. I know what stupid people put on the internet. And you know what? I'm happy that you know that, because that's the, exactly the way it ought to be. If it doesn't have puppies and kitties on it, it's not a credible website, right? Okay, so a blog is something that anybody, anybody, anybody can put anything they want to on there. And they don't have to be correct. They can say any stupid thing they want to. And if you put it into your paper and quote it, Unless, of course, it's a joke, and you don't need to do that for an academic paper. If you quote somebody's blog or vlog or personal website, see, that's number two. If you do any of that, I promise you, you're going to lose points and respect from your instructor. Because we expect you to go to good places. But every place is a good place, Dr. Jones. Isn't that the case? Every place. The internet is a democratic source of information. Bolt. Boop. Okay, so I didn't finish that. The internet is a democratic source of stuff. Just stuff. Now, I promise you, a lot of that stuff is really funny and a lot of that stuff sounds really good but not everybody has the right stuff on the internet okay so there's lots of places on the internet that look like they tell the right stuff it looks credible it looks professional but just because it looks that way doesn't mean that it is. Number three down there, wiki sites. Wiki websites can be untrustworthy. Hmm. I'm not saying Wikipedia has no useful information and wiki this and wiki that and whatever. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is those kinds of places have basically been group edited and who knows who the real authors are or the real editors are and anybody can put anything out there so you have to be more skeptical than that how do I know all of this well I googled it from a random site on the internet that I've never seen before that is exactly the truth I just googled in there bad internet research sources and that's one of the pages that I found and I just copied and pasted and cut and put it up here on a PowerPoint. Now that's my source but I'm telling you anybody can do that kind of stuff and I don't want to see you doing it but the, the data that this one has here while I would never cite it as a source in a research paper. There's some lessons to be learned. You can find anything just about that you want to on the internet. So how can I know if something might be a pretty good source? Well another internet source told me this and these are actually pretty good questions. Who's the author? Who is it that wrote it? If you can't find that 
Hmm. If somebody's not willing to take credit for what it is that they wrote, I might question who it is that wrote it. Number two, when was the material published? If it's too far back, it may be old information. That's not to say that something that was published 10 or 20 or 100 years ago is not worth any value. That's not the case. A lot of things that were published many years ago are worth value. But when you're looking for business, up-to-date business and market information, a 1998 publication about the strategy behind what XYZ company is doing, that's going to be 20 years out of date. And you shouldn't be using something that far back. Number three, what's the purpose of the source? Is it for advertising? Oh, it could be. If you go to a company's website to get critical information, be very, very careful about it. In fact, for my papers, you do need to go to the company's website. But you need to do that very carefully because the company's website is not there to be objective. The company's website is there to either sell you products or to make you or to interest you in being an investor. It is not there to criticize the company. So you are not likely to find negative stuff about the company at the company's website. And that's not to say you should only look for negative stuff. Just realize that I know that your mama loves you too, but your mama is not a source that I would use as a third party, uh, third party objective source about the quality of your work. My mama the same way. She thinks I'm perfect. So the company websites, be careful about it. How is this source proved? If somebody says something, they need to have some proof about it, some data. They are an expert. They've worked in the field for a long time. They have data that they've collected. They observed it themselves. What is it that they did that shows that they know what they're talking about? And number five, who is it they're trying to influence? Realize all those political websites that you've seen out there and all those ads that you've seen out there, they're there to influence certain kinds of people. And company websites and articles from Time Magazine, all that, they have an audience in mind. Even a journal article, you know those Journal of Fantastic Science or whatever it might be, that's there for a specific kind of audience. And you need to be careful that you don't fall prey to uh, somebody trying to influ fl influence you uh, to do something or accept something that you really shouldn't accept. So where should you go? You need to go to the library. As I said, you need to go to the company's website as well, but you really need to go to the library first because you've got to find out what objective sources are likely to say about a company, an industry, a marketplace. And you have a great library. You have a great library with great website. And it's got a lot of information. For one thing, it has information on APA. And right now it's got the APA Style Central you can access from the library's website. So if you need to know some information about citations, what a paper should look like in APA format, go to that site. Now, from another source from Southwest Minnesota State University, somebody has taken a look, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. I want you to just see the different kinds of uh, publications have different kinds of audiences, have different kinds of focus, have different kinds of information out there, and you need to be careful about which one you use. Not that one's better than the other, it's just they're different. Scholarly peer-reviewed journals, that's not what we're interested for these kinds of our papers that you're writing for my class. And newspapers on the other side, same thing. Generally, most newspapers are really written to uh, provide just local information, not to provide uh, 
third-party, objective, insightful kinds of information. Once in a while, popular magazines like Times, Newsweek, Business Week, People, Fortune Magazine, etc. like that, those are popular magazines. They may be business-oriented or car-oriented or entertainment-oriented. They're still popular magazines, and they're fine to get basic kinds of information on, but they don't happen to have critical editorial information. You're going to get the best stuff for papers in this class either by looking at the professional trade journals or at the commentary opinion journals. And you can see some examples of those kinds. And that is what you're going to find when you go to the databases at the library. Now the library will also happen to have the scholarly peer review journals and the newspapers and popular magazines in there. But if you want to find the information that's going to work best for your paper, this is really where you need to go. So go to the databases and in fact there is a subject index area on business and economics. And if you go to that one you can find over a dozen different databases that have searchable areas where you can find information. Now I don't want to spend a lot of time on each one of these. In fact, I have some videos I'll show you in just a moment. I have a place for some videos for you to be able to watch me talk about how to go look for information. But the next few slides, and I'm going to slide through those, the next few slides talk about some databases that I think are useful to you. I'm going to put these PowerPoints up for you to be able to download. You can take a look at them uh, in more depth. ABI Inform, Business Source Complete, BSC Business Searching Interface, General Business File, Merchant Archives, Merchant Online. Those are some of the better ones that are out there. But how do you find out how to use those databases? Well, go to my channel, my YouTube channel, which I didn't put any advertising on it. There probably is some advertising, but I didn't put it on there. Go to my YouTube channel, which you can find there at the bottom. And I have a series of videos, and I'm going to show you uh, what that channel looks like. So, here's my channel right here. Whoa, right there. There is my channel. And you don't need to look at all the different videos. There's nothing bad on here. But some of it has got, uh, you'll notice, some of uh, the assignments that we've had this semester. Um, but you'll also notice there's some stuff like I have for some of my classes. Uh, I use TED Talks. And those are not ones that you're wanting to use you need to use the library databases. So let's suppose that you were to try um, oh, Merchant Online. Merchant Online, I've got a video showing how to make use of that. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, this report and video is about Merchant Online. Now you'll notice I'm using a database from another university but I'm going to show you in this video here it's about a seven minute video how to use Mergent Online and I've got several other videos on there now I don't show all of uh, the videos that I brought up right here or all the ones that you have available on the ESU website but what I do want you to do is to try to find a way to use a lot of videos to find information to make a better paper. And I'm going to give you, in another video, my expectations for your paper. Take care. Good researching. Talk to you later.